so, like so many of us, I ventured out and I bought a mini lathe. And, of course, as with everybody else, then I started trying to make it work and everything was a constant problem and everything broke. Uh, what happened with these things in this particular one, which is one of the newer ones with a three-quarter horsepower motor, it bore six. in this box and a metal filing sprinkle into the box and blow the control unit. Lo and behold, there's no control unit available anyway. So anyway, I actually ended up with a second lathe because it finally sent me one because it couldn't get me apart. It still sits in the box. Uh, what I ended up doing is I bought one of these industrial sewing machine motors and I rigged it into it to run everything. And this is a really neat unit. I'm going to close up on it a little bit for you. You won't be able to see me much, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Control unit turns on like that. Now it's mounted up here where it's initially intended to be underneath the sewing machine. But up here is where you're going to find a VFD drive on a commercial lathe. That's to keep it out of the metal filings. I've also put the speed control up here as well, because when it was here, you could bump into it and change the speed, and it's set right now for full range. And what that means is, go from zero to 2,000 RPM, go and back to zero in seconds. Now this can't be done with the belt that comes with the machine, or the gears that come with the machine. This is the belt that comes with the machine. And this is the belt that you buy on eBay that replaces it. And this is what the belt I'm using looks like. As you can see, it's considerably thicker. And if I can show you the teeth, The teeth are much thicker too. And by the way, this belt lasted on the first motor maybe 30 days, maybe 10 hours of machine run time before it tore up the teeth because the Chinese do not refine their tooling. There's all kinds of sharp jagged points on the gears they use. Uh, this is now equipped with US made gears, L size belt, uh, much stronger gears. These happen to be metal. I've got both metal and aluminum gears that I've used on the machine. So we're going to get into a little bit of the function. First, it's all built in all the way in. So Say we want the slowest speed to be 
200 RPMs on the spindle. We set this to just over 300 and select. And now the bottom speed is 200 RPMs on the spindle. It's going to say 300 and something on the screen. Now, if we want to do the top speed, as you saw, it's going all the way up to 3,500. 3,500 is 2,058 on the spindle. Just select the same two buttons as the guide says. Instead of P1, you're going to use P2, push the select button, and then change it. And we want the spindle to turn no faster than, let's say, 1,000 RPMs. So we're going to set this to 2,000, which is going to be 1,100 RPMs. Oops, went too far. And select. Now, the slowest speed is at 300, and the slot high speed is 1,100. I like to pick whatever I'm cutting, and I usually like to run about 700 RPM, 400 to 700. So we'll leave the bottom on where it is, so I can slow it down for depending on what I'm doing. But we're going to change the top one, and I'm going to make the top speed that's 883, so I'll set it at 1500. And uh, now the top speed is 1500, that means I'm turning 800. So each piece I put in there, I'm back to 800. It's really convenient. Uh, so now I'm going to go inside and I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to show. Oh, yeah, I already showed you that this works. Uh, and it is reversible, by the way, if you want to go the other way. Just switch the lever, same factory lever as original. And now it will go the other way. Which means you can do forward and reverse threading. Of course, you still have to change the gear. You can still set this in neutral so that the shaft is not burning. Not moving at all. This is the motor in the back. Right here in the original location where the original motor was mounted. It's actually a little bit smaller lengthwise than the original motor. Diameter is about the same. It's fit right in. As you can see the belt's in where it's supposed to be. Uh, running. <laughs> By the way, that instant stop is because that's in de designed for a sewing machine. It's supposed to stop the needle in a certain spot. You can actually program it to do those things, but we don't need any of those. We don't need to stop with the needle up or stop with the needle down because we're just cutting a lathe. I wonder, could you program it to stop every quarter turn and use it as a drill index? Might be possible. Uh, but anyway, that's the motor. Now I'm going to take it apart and show you how it's put together. You've probably, if you have this model laid, you probably have had it apart a dozen times already. You probably already replaced your belt several times and belts are junk. Maybe you bought from that CNC guy on eBay that has a belt set and sprockets. It's probably a pretty good deal for $100 because uh, according to him his sprockets are all polished and stuff. I kind of like what he's doing. Uh, but his sprockets won't run this. So as you can see all the regular gears are still in the regular spot where they're supposed to be. That's neutral. That's forward or reverse. That's the other way. Okay, neutral again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart and show you how this all goes in there. Now, still using the original plastic gears. I don't use this for threading anymore. This, this lathe is actually a test lathe. The other one's going to be a test lathe too. I build mods for them. Uh, these mods, you're going to be able to buy these parts uh, within a few days probably. A lot of them are going on eBay. You'll be able to buy them separately or as a kit. 
depending on whether you want to build the whole system yourself or just buy it all and bolt it on. Now, you might notice that some of the Allen screws are a little different than what you're used to seeing. It's because they are. The Chinese Allen screws are inferior. They are a little too short. They tend to pull threads. They won't hold together well. By the way, this adjustment on this is important when you're assembling it back together to make the gears all line up right. Oh, yeah, this one's got the, I had to replace these too because the ones that came on the lathe were cheesy. Oh, who knows? Maybe I'll edit some of the time out of it. But this is actual time right here. What it takes to take it apart. And I've had it apart a lot of times. Uh, what you're going to see when I take this off, I'm going to turn it around. This plate has to be modified. Otherwise, it will not clear the belt. And it's very close. So this part, you have to cut this little corner out, this side panel right here has to be cut and it has to be actually cut down because the belt runs really tight in here. It actually runs out here that's not wear marks from the belt, that's from me cutting it. You can see that bottom tooth is barely on there. Um, so now you can see the belt, belt's exposed. Uh, and I'm going to run it again for you. I'm going to program it up a little faster. So you can see it run faster. This is actual time. That's how fast it goes from zero to full and back to zero. Pretty smooth. Now, if you see the belt go, you see the belt moves a little bit, that's when you need that extra clearance on the cover because if you, that's when it actually might touch the cover. And this has been running at 4,000 RPMs for about three hours. No, 3,500 RPMs on the motor, 2,000 on that. There's no belt dust. Originally, it was tearing up the belt, so I got it lined up right. So that's the belt. You might notice that this plate's been changed. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the gear fits in there really tight. I'm going to take the motor off and a few other parts, and I'm going to show you how the rest of it goes. And don't, don't tease me for using a punch, because I don't have a spanner wrench. That's how I learned from the old guy when I was a kid. That's the way I'm going to take this off. before this video is only going to include the teardown it's not going to re include the reassembly the reassembly is going to be much more detailed because it's going to be the instruction manual for anybody trying to buy these parts and put them on the motor put them on their mini lathe same kind of washers and mounting system as the other one Belt, motor, now that's the mount on the motor, you've seen this motor for sale, sells on several other brands, the control unit is a different brand, right here, that is a shear pin that's screwed into the keyway, that is so if you jam it, you can pray that it's 
shears off rather than does other damage. There's also a set of overload protection circuits going in the control unit. They're not here yet. So that's the motor. Oh, by the way, in case you wanted to see it. So we'll turn the control unit off, and now we go to this. I want to show you how this is put in there. You, you might not be able to see it. Let me see. Can you see? Let me try to get you in there a little closer. You might not be able to see it, but the flange on the pulley. is all the way inside this ring and the factory won't do it you need that extra clearance because again the old belt the new belt the old belt would snap with the kind of force this has So backyard mechanic, here we go. No spanner wrench. They're not very tight anyway. I take it off and put it on. I fit every system and test every system before it goes on the market. So this is your original drive gear. It's still making contact with the keyway. Mm, maybe an eighth of an inch. I really need to get a new keyway. This thing's been apart and together so many times. But it locks in good. Now, you remember that plastic bushing that you used to have here? Now it's metal. I'm going to make a metal one for the old standard size, too. It's bigger than this one. This one's smaller for this pulley. There's your pulley. As you see, it fits over the keyway just like the factory original. You can see where the Allen screw from the American version is still there and the new keyway slot that I broached after turning that. Uh, and then there's this part. I don't need to take it off. I, can, I just showed you what it is. Let me see, where is that? It's, that part right here is plastic. Now it's metal. It uh, it's all set. Uses the original screws. Fits in the original place. The difference is, pulley fits inside. Now I've actually thought about it. I could actually make this hub smooth. Make this an oil seal. And I could put the tapered bearings in an oil bath with an eye. I'm not going to do that right now. This, uh, this mod's been very extensive. I got five of them built. Uh, so we're going to put them on the market and see if they sell. And if they do, then we'll launch a mass produce on them. If they don't, eh, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next one, we'll be putting it back together and how to assemble it if you buy the kit. Thank you.